five things that women can do differently to get better outcomes in relationships with men and their children. Now, I did one for the men already, ladies, so I'd be remiss if I didn't talk to the queens too. All right? They'll go as follows. Then I'll break them down for you. First, protect your womb. Protect your womb and your body. Number two, work on cultivating relationships earlier rather than waiting till later. Number three, marry before you carry or at least be in some kind of long-term relationship where you know the man is there and excited and ready to take on the challenge with you. Number four, talk to the elders. Talk to people who've been married successfully for long periods of time to learn what you need to do as a wife. And number five, and not, not any less important than any of them, is learn some domestic skills. Learn how to cook something and clean something. Don't be one of those. So I'm going to break them down right now. First of all, when I say protect your womb, I mean, ladies, as women, you can't treat your body like corn. You got to treat it like diamonds. And you talk about the men are deadbeats and so forth. But at the end of the day, the woman is in charge of sex and babies. You can bring a life forward or you can abort that life. But you have the control and you pick. You choose the men that you decide to lay down and procreate with. So at the end of the day, you have the ultimate say. You can even have an abortion without telling a man, consulting him or anything. So once you take that challenge, you're all in, sis. All right. So that's number one. Protect your womb. Number two, work on cultivating relationships earlier in life. Ladies, really, your highest sexual value is between 18 and about 30 with no kids. OK, and you spend that time chasing your career, chasing your goals, chasing personal success. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you just put half that time into trying to build and cultivate a relationship with one man, instead of having hot girl summers, instead of having the whole phase and running around, putting all these bodies on you, then you would have a better chance of getting married, having children with the man you met and building something from the bottom up. OK, you usually wait till y'all 30 years old to start really taking men seriously. And by then it's too late. All right. Number three, marry before you carry. Now, I understand marriage is not as easy nowadays because men know they got a lot to lose. But at least you should be in some kind of borderline common law situation. You living with the man. Y'all been together for years. There is some connection where you know you're with the man that wants to take on uh, having a baby and dealing with that responsibility with you. It takes two. All right. Number four, talk to the elders. Y'all out here listening to Sexy Red, people out here talking about my, my, my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. You listen to these crazy women on, online and social media. You need to sit down with grandma, somebody who's been with their man 30 years, 20 years, 40 years, and let them tell you, sis, this is how you keep a man. Getting a man and keeping one are two different things. And we need to get away from that mindset where we following the wrong people. Housewives of Atlanta and all these crazy shows. So talk to the elders. And last but not least, learn some domestic skills. At the end of the day, sister, your titties is going to drop, your butt going to sag, your belly going to pop out. But if you can get in the kitchen and make a man a meal, you won't never lose them. I don't know of any one, uh, woman that's married who lost her man that knew how to cook, unless she was cheating on him. A woman that can cook nowadays is prices, because I tell you straight up, most of y'all that are 35 and under can't boil an egg, can't even make minute rice. And you're taking these kids to Popeye's and, and uh, McDonald's and all that stuff, and that's why they fat. So please, learn to cook. We got YouTube, we got Pinterest, you got all kinds of ways to learn how to make a meal for a man. And the key to the man is through his stomach. Sex gets him, stomach keeps him. All right? So I'll run him back just so you know. Protect your womb. You decide who lives and who dies. Do not lay down and procreate with men that are losers and irresponsible and then give birth to their children and be mad at the world. Number two, work on cultivating relationships early. You know, there's an old saying, they say uh, white women go to college to, uh, to find a husband. Black women go to college to prove they don't need one. And the fact of the matter is usually if it ain't your high school or college sweetheart or very shortly after, your chances of getting married or having a long-term relationship drop dramatically. All right. Number three, marry before you carry. 
Look for a man that is invested in you and wants a family and try to prevent having kids before then. But definitely try to put yourself in a situation where you're not going to end up doing it alone. Number four, talk to the elders. Talk to people who have successfully made it in marriage because marriage is hard as hell. And basically it is falling in and out of love with the same person over and over again and staying there for the long run. Outside of infidelity or, or somebody beating you and abusing you, you're supposed to stick it out. All right. And last but not least, learn a domestic skill. Learn how to be able to cook something for your man, clean something. Don't just sit here and be some woman that don't know how to cook nothing. If not, if just for your man, do it for your children. They deserve to have a home cooked meal. That's a very big power, women. That is the health of the next generation. You get to decide in even more ways than one who lives and who dies. So that's a, a little feather in your cap. I hope y'all listened to the whole video and I hope you took heed to it.